Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Saturday the 21st January 2023. Today's Millwall news, today was match day, away at Cardiff and it was a good performance, it was a good team performance and we ended up grinding out a 1-0 win. So let's have a read of the match report from millwallfc.co.uk. Millwall takes South Wales successful win over Cardiff. Uh, yeah, it's our first win in, I think, well, I mentioned it in yesterday's preview video. I think it's like our 10th visit there. So we haven't won there in 10, 10 visits. And we haven't won there at this new stadium, the Cardiff City Stadium that they moved to in 2009. That's our first ever win there. So that was something special. So Mill won their winners over Cardiff City and Skybet Championship on Saturday afternoon. Tom Bradshaw notched a first half winner as the Lions claimed a fourth away victory of the campaign. Gary Rowett made two changes for the trip to South Wales with Bill Savile and Mason Bennett stepping into the starting 11 at the expense of Murray Wallace, who missed out through injury. He wasn't dropped. And Andres Vogelsammer, who dropped to the bench. The Lions saw plenty of the ball in the first five minutes, but found he must have Wilder and Bennett, which showered wide in front of goal. Former Lions lonely Shea Yojo then missed a chance to slide in and unmarked Jaden Philogene at the other end before an audacious effort as Iron Fleming almost caught another ex mill player Ryan also out in front. Goal from the halfway line, but the stopper was able to race back and claim the ball. George Long had to claw Callum Robinson's header away from the creeping into the top corner as the chances began to flow. And on 12 minutes, the Lions should have taken the lead, but George Honeyman's uh, cross was turned wide by Fleming from 12 yards out. Uh, with 26 minutes on the clock, Mill were in the lead. Villagine's cheap concession of possession allowed Jake Cooper to take control of the ball and run forward. Yes, Jake Cooper went on an amazing dribbling run, like a, like a Maradona he was. He slotted a, a pass through to Bradshaw, who took advantage of sleepy defending by Cedric Kipre to nip in and strike home from an acute angle. Uh, Philogene attempted to make up for his, error, uh, for his error by hitting a vicious effort just over the crossbar shortly before the half hour mark with a defensive blunder of Mill's own, then allowing Robinson to set up Philogene, uh, but his effort was brilliantly blocked by Sean Hudson. A Savile strike was comfortable for Hawthorne. At the half-time whistle came into view with one third chance falling at the feet of goal scorer Bradshaw but as Honeyman crossed, the Welshman found the dive of the goalkeeper. Two minutes into the second half, Cardiff could have levelled, but Robinson's bending attempt fortunately went past the far post of Long, who was rooted to the spot. Keon Atete then tried his luck from outside the area, but he failed to drop the stopper. Ojo headed over from Callum Madalda. Cross as the Bluebirds looked to get back on level terms, but the Lions could have had a second just after the half hour after the hour mark as Honeyman took a pass and he strived to bear down on goal. His effort, however, was blocked over by Mark McGuinness. Uh, Leonard made a welcome return to action on 63 minutes as he replaced Bennett. The next opportunity going the way of Millwall was Fleming in a free kick into the arms of Allsop. Bradshaw then beat his marker and charged towards goal with 15 minutes uh, to play, but he was caught up by the Cardiff defence and the danger was averted. Fleming's determined run down the left-hand side in 82 minutes saw the Dutchman slide across towards substitute Jamie Chaplin, but his attempt was saved well by Horsop. Uh Kind of underplaying that. Um, Zion Fleming uh, was battling... Uh, the Cardiff player all the way back as he's going bearing down on the Cardiff goal. He realises he's got enough brains to figure out he's not going to get a shot away. So he just does a little back heel. Um, not straight back behind him, but back into the side, into the area. And that's where Shackleton was. And he shot towards goal and it was saved by Allsop. But that was amazing stuff from Zion Fleming. Uh, although the Bluebirds looked for a late equaliser from there, Mill comfortably saw out the remaining time, claimed three points on the road. And the team was as follows Long, McNamara, Hutchinson, Cooper, Savile, Mitchell, Stiles, Honeyman, Fleming, Bennett, Bradshaw, and the subs 
fully used subs um, definitely needed that um, Cresswell for Savile in injury time Malone for Styles in injury time seven minutes of injury time I don't know where the hell they got that from. Uh, Vogel Sammer on 79 minutes for Honeyman uh, Leonard on the 63 minutes for Bennett and Shackleton on 80 minutes for Bradshaw and the un unused subs were Biakovsky and Essay. Although Essay at one point was uh, set to come on, and the like like Gary Rout changed his mind and decided to bring the loan on. So, interesting stuff there. Um, yeah, Gary Rout using the substitutes well, um, realizing that we're a bit under the posh, making formation changes, bringing people back, and moving a lot of the pieces around, and it did seem to work. It did seem to work. Um, match stats here so free bookings for them free bookings for us um, 1268 mil fans of that game and they were loud as hell it was amazing stuff um, definitely helped that uh, definitely helped um, the players I'm sure it did uh, a lot of Cardiff fans are saying fair play to, to me all today they were very loud a lot louder than the home, home crowd yeah, the home fans, the loudest they were when when they were chanting for for the chairman to leave. Um, so, yeah, well done to the one thousand two hundred sixty eight fans who went there and uh, made a lot of noise because that certainly did help. Now, moving on to post match comments from Gary Rat. Uh, we had to dig it out, dig it out. Garrett's verdict after Millwall secure victory at Cardiff City. This is from London News Online. Don't find it today. South London Press's online website. Garrett Rowe admitted it was a tough afternoon for his side, despite claiming a 1 0 win away to Cardiff City. The Lions secured all three points uh, at Cardiff City Stadium for the first time since 2005. It's the first time we won away at Cardiff since 2005. Cardiff City Stadium did not exist in 2005. They moved into it in 2010, in the 2009-2010 season. So, before that, it was Ninian Park. Remember that? Remember Ninian Park? Uh, thanks to Tom Bradshaw's first half winner in the 26th minute. And this was the South London's fourth away win of the championship season. Uh, you could say that uh, for large parts of the game, certainly in the second half. It was pretty attritional, said Rowan. The game dictated out a little bit. Uh, when you come to Cardiff, uh, they've got almost nothing to lose. They always play with a front four and keep them quite high up against you. Every time we attacked and lost the ball, uh, we felt like we were almost four against four. We left ourselves very open at times. We could have dealt with it a lot better. Ramp changed formation three times as his side were forced to really dig deep and avoid conceding a late equaliser. Yeah, they, um, Cardiff do draw a lot of games. They haven't won for... 12 games, but they do draw quite a few games. Going in a goal lock means we have a tendency to drop in and predict what we've got. Explain Ray. We had to do that for long spills. Uh, we had to change formation three times. We had to put different players on. We had to dig it out, and sometimes those three points actually feel a lot nicer than three points when you played really well. Uh, the character of the group came to the fore today. Yeah, that was a hard fought win. Um, a lot of focus, a lot of attention. Um, Cardiff City had actually had probably a lot of shots. They might have had more shots than I haven't checked it yet. Uh, that's for tomorrow's video. Um, but they didn't. They were shooting too early, and they shot high and wide. I don't know if they thought they were trying to catch the goalkeeper off guard. Uh, George Long's not really known for um, not being able to save long shots. That's not really. Maybe that's in his scouting report. I don't know, but yeah, they they were kind of I'd say lazy. They they didn't really want to work to get in behind Millwall to, to do anything. As soon as they had like half a sight of goal, they they were shooting. But it was going high and wide. So um, yeah, so like it's a fair fair play to Gary Rowe and his pre formation changes and his full use of substitutes. Um, certainly, you could say that that one helped win the game. It certainly did. Um, 
very very well played by Gara out today. And now we're going to go on to more uh, post match comments from Gara out. So um, this is from SuffolkNews.co.uk. Mill boss discusses Murray Wallace's injury and Ryan Leonard's return. Uh, Murray Wallace joined Tyler Berry on the injury list after cutting his foot ahead of Saturday's win against Cardiff. So another cut foot. Uh, we heard last week Scott Malone was out with a cut foot. Now Murray Wallace with a cut foot. What's going on? How are they cutting their feet? Is it a certain type of boot that they have? Um, that's too tight. Uh, I don't know. What is going on? So Murray Wallace missed Mills one nil win away at Cardiff City after injuring his foot in training. The defender had been criticised for his performances in recent weeks. Our eyebrows were raised when he was left out of the Lions squad on Saturday afternoon. The club went on to confirm that he had suffered an injury, which has left Gary out of an even thinner squad than usual. He had a cut on the top of his foot, which I think got infected, so he was unavailable, the mule boss explained. He tried to get out there yesterday, but he couldn't. So it's just another example of how thin our squad is and how... You can only applaud the players out there for giving everything they've got and going and getting another big result. I think Cardiff have drawn five out of the last six games, so they're not an easy sort to beat, regardless of the position that they're in. That's a big three points for us today. On the other end of the spectrum, Ryan Leonard returned to action for the first time in five months, having last featured against Norwich City on August the 18th, 2022. Raul was delighted to welcome the versatile midfielder back into the team, having played the last 27 minutes in the Welsh capital. He's a top, top player, he said. Uh, right side, centre back, right wing back, midfield. He's got energy legs. He covers ground so quickly. I think you saw it today when he came on. He had a huge impact for us. Uh, he's one that we've, had bad, we've held back because we're desperate to keep him fit. And he's desperate to stay fit. He's been really, really unlucky and he just needs a little bit of a break. Uh, Lenny just to get through the next three or four weeks and to try and stay fit till the end of the season because he's a huge player for us. Exactly. Um, yeah, he's a huge player because he's he can play three different positions, which, uh, in terms of a thin squad, is what you need. You want players who can play in different positions. That's what you want. So that's ideal for us. Now, um. On a Saturday, quite often early in the morning, you'll have a couple of pieces um, from either the London News Online or the Southern News. Um, and I don't really get to, to mention them because it's, it kind of gets lost in the match day because it's all about the matches. That's what it's all about. We play matches. We want to know the results. Did we win? Did we lose? So those kind of stories that get published Saturday morning, they get kind of get lost. I thought I would show you the one from today um, because it's quite um, interesting. So it's from SuffolkNews.co.uk. So Danny McNamara sets out his dream of taking Mill to the Premier League. The defender is determined to take his boyhood club back to the top flight for the first time since 1989-90 season. So here we go. So you can see it's not got many views as well. Uh, they don't get many views uh, publishing that time on a Saturday morning, but because uh, it's match day. So uh, Danny McNamara is living in the moment, taking each game as it comes. It's the way that Mill will like to approach things with their ultimate aim for the season being to secure a place in the playoffs and their highest league finish since 2002. But for now, the focus is on Saturday's match against Cardiff City, and McNamara knows the importance. Picking up a positive result after the Lions' recent dip in form. There's a saying that you can't get too high and you can't get too low, he told News at Den. In the Championship, obviously anyone can beat anyone. Uh, we're just going to go out there and rack up as many points as we can. Uh, we'll just keep performing the way that we're doing, picking up our waveform a little bit, and we'll be alright. Of course, that doesn't mean that he or his teammates don't look at the table, although the ban on discussing Mills' league position means that the squad aren't as focused on it as some of the supporters. The championship is still incredibly tight with the gap from Norwich in 7th down to Reading in 14th, just two points. However, while some people believe that some teams will manage to pull away from the chase impact, Mac Mara believes that it will remain just as competitive throughout the campaign. I think you'll see a consistent thing going on where nobody runs away with it. 
he explained. Obviously, Burnley are atop the lead. They're running away with it at the moment. With the rest, I think anyone can beat anyone. It'll be very tight towards the end of the season. Uh, the right back can, however, take a brief moment to explore his dream of taking his boyhood club back to the top flight for the first time since 1989-90, eight years before he was even born. Millwall are one of the biggest clubs in English football to never play in the Premier League. The fans are desperate for that run to end. Oh, 100%, that'll be the dream, Matt Warren admits. I think it'll be a lot of lads' dreams as well. I think the fans will be buzzing. It will be carnage in the Premier League. Uh, we're not going to get too carried away with that. We'll just keep doing what we're doing and seeing how it goes. Whatever happens this season, McNamara believes that progress has been made. After all, this is just his second full season of Championship football, and he's still a relative rookie compared to the rest of the back line. The 24-year-old uh, does see himself as more experienced figure in the first-team squad. However, although skipper Sean Hutchinson often takes charge by barking orders at him when things aren't well, I'm learning in every game I play, he admitted. Obviously, I see myself as more of a senior player where I can help the young lads going through like Rom. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and hoping I can develop as the season goes on. Playing alongside Hutchie, his communication is massive, his experience is massive, and he'll tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Although he'll tell me if I'm doing something good as well. So uh, He does give me a right bollocking, to be fair, but that's all part and parcel of football, and it'll help me massively. If we have an argument on the pitch, we obviously don't carry it over. It's on the pitch, and it will help us out in the game. So there you go, I just want to share that Danny McNamara. On his aim of getting uh, Premier League football with Millwall, which is certainly something worth aiming for, don't you agree? Um, now, he might not be looking at the table and might be banned from mentioning where Millwall are in the table, but we will look at the table right now. Uh, just because, 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 why not? So you can see, after the middle of the defeat, we dropped down a bit, there was a bit of a gap. We closed the that was a three, uh, three point gap to West Brom. Now West Brom are below us. We've gone above. It's up and down, up and down, isn't it? Um, so West Brom lost uh, against Burnley off a Friday night after a four win streak. And that, that's what a loss will do to you, know, drop you down. So they were all puffed up in sixth place, thinking, hey, we're, we're, we're there. And then they lose and then they drop down. It's certainly like a game of snakes and ladders, isn't it? But let's talk about Millwall. So Millwall here, 42 points. Uh, level 1 points with Middlesbrough, Norwich, Luton. Um, Middlesbrough play Sunderland on Sunday. So Sunderland having lost Ellis Sims and, and other players do look a bit adrift. So we'll see how they get on. But you probably, after what Middlesbrough did to us last uh, week, you, you've got to think Middlesbrough looked good for a win there. Um, yeah, so, here we go, obviously we've got a week off next week, um, I don't know, um, shall we see, is anybody playing next week actually, or are they all in the FA Cup, okay, so there are some teams playing, it looks like Middlesbrough, Watford, Paul QPR, and Coventry Huddersfield. So, interestingly, uh, we could find ourselves um, with two games in hand, because at the moment we've got a game in hand, which is a game against Luton, Luton away. That is our game in hand, that got postponed. Um, so, interestingly, if that game in hand, very important now, if we win that, obviously it knocks Luton down and it, it, it pushes us up. Then the game in hand that we've got that we'll have coming up will be against Burnley. Burnley at home though, our home form, very good. Now, so while that win today was was very important, it didn't get us into the playoffs, and that's not, that's no problem. The aim is to keep get into the playoffs on the lot, be there at the end of the season, the final day. But what this win did do, it pushed us up in the away league table. So in terms of away games, we were down here. We had a win, 
and we've jumped up at least four or five places. So we're now on 15 away points for the season, which is pretty good. Um, could be a lot better. I think realistically we probably be need to be in the top eight actually. So we're only four points behind that. So, but yeah, if we can get ourselves up to roundabout here in terms of the away form, that means um, we're probably almost guaranteed to be uh, in the playoffs because we know that our away form is the problem. Because look at this this is our home form this season. We've only conceded eight goals at home all season in 13 games. That's the best in the league by far. By far. The next closest is 12. And that's champ uh, champions elect Burnley. And Middlesbrough are the team that we just played. Um, so we only scored 20 goals at home. But we've only lost two games. And we're third behind. Runaway leaders Burnley. And runaway second up, second place team, Sheffield United. Third. So the home form is as stellar and as golden as it's always been. And it's this away form. So that, that result today against Cardiff was very important to get the three points, not the one point, the three points. And we could do with getting more three points, get us up this table. And I think we need to be in the top eight. Realistically, because look at the teams that are in the top eight in terms of away form. It's the teams that are challenging, challenging at the top. Uh, Sheffield United, Luton, Burnley, Norwich, Sunderland, Watford, Middlesbrough, West Brom. It's the teams that are there or thereabouts. And we need, in order for us to be there or thereabouts, we're doing it on based solely on our home form. We need to push up into this top ten of away form. And uh, Hopefully we can do that. Um, but our next game is a home game against Sunderland. So that's not going to be easy because look, they're the sixth best away team in the league. Although they're playing the third best home team in the league. So and on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.